Hi everyone. It's time to go live. I'm going to refresh my screen, bring it up so I can see if there's any comments. Okay. All right. Looks like I'm good to go. All right. Hi everyone. How you doing? It's Nicole Steele with the Joyful Stamper. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator, and every Tuesday at 2 o'clock, I go live with a live stamping class. If you can't watch it live, you can watch the replay because I upload this to YouTube and I post it on my blog. So however you're watching it, thank you for joining me. And it was a bit crazy in the stamp room this morning. I mean, you can see I got a little inky. And I actually did not design the cards ahead of time. I have the pieces cut, but what I did instead is I got a couple samples out of the mini catalog and I thought we could make those today. So just a little bit of housekeeping though before we get started. Um, today, really big news, today's the second celebration release of Stampin' Up! So if you are not a subscriber to my newsletter, make sure you do that. So that, that went out this morning and I had all the pictures. There's packs of paper, new stamp sets. I already ordered it 5 o'clock this morning. I'm good to go. So make sure you go check that out. Lots and lots of pretty stuff. Um, sharing this video. I would really appreciate the shares. And as a thank you, anybody that shares and types the word shared in the comments because that's really important. Facebook does not let me see who shares this video. But I will do a drawing with the winner announced at next Tuesday's live for this kerchief card kit. This was a celebration item in the first release and it sold out. So you can't get this anymore. But I have one. Unopened, brand new. All you have to do is share the video type shared in the comments and I will draw a name from those who did so next Tuesday for this prize and this is a super cute super cute pack I almost didn't want to part with it but because I appreciate you sharing that's the prize so, okay um other news join join my team I would love to have you join my team of joyful stampers there's a ton of free stuff you get you can go to my site thejoyfulstamper.com and read about it and it's really fun it's really fun I'm glad that uh, I joined Stampin Up I have a really good time with it next up I'm trying to go through this quick because I want to get to stamping March's Paper Pumpkin. I just ordered my kit a couple days ago, but we're getting an extra stamp set in it this month because they're celebrating seven years of Paper Pumpkin. And I'll tell you what, the kits keep getting better and better. Look how cute that box is. I cannot wait to get that. I love these colors. Um, if you go to my site, thejoyfulstamper.com, I have a paper pumpkin tab that explains what paper pumpkin is, shows you all your options, and every month I update it with what the colors are going to be in the next kit. So they never tell us exactly what's going to be in the kit, but they usually give us some teasers and sneak peeks. Part of the fun of paper pumpkin is the surprise. But if you're a new stamper or you're somebody that stamps on the go or travels a lot, this is really good to get all-inclusive, everything's in the box, instructions, designed to take about 30 to 45 minutes, stamping on the run. Um, that's it. Yeah, that's it for my news. So <laughs> we can say hi if you jumped on. Um, if you have questions or comments, go ahead and write those in because I check those periodically as I'm looking. So let's get started with the stamping. We are going to, I'm going to case some two cards today. Um, I thought I would do this one on page 11. And I'm going to do, ah, where was it? I thought I was simply turning the page. There it is. This one right here from the Parisian's Blossom Suite. Both of these are two of my favorite suites in this mini catalog. And yeah, my catalog's about to fall apart here because I've looked through it so many times. But let me tell you, it was crazy, crazy in my stamping, not really a studio, but at my stamping desk this morning. 
I was trying a new t- new to me technique and I was going to do it for the Facebook live and it just wasn't happening. It just wasn't. I need to work on it some more. So I thought, you know what? I'm going to get two ca- two cards from the catalog and we're going to make those because that's always a good idea. And it's always okay to do that. So I want to show you that you can look at what's in the catalog and you can recreate it. So let's get started. It's going to be this one on page 11. If you have the Stampin' Up! mini catalog, pull it out, follow along with me. All right. And we will go. And I'm going to have to reference my catalog because, like I said, I actually did not make a sample up ahead of time. So we're just going to wing this. So the first thing I'm doing is I cut a five and a half by eight and a half piece of pretty peacock cardstock and I scored it down the middle at four and a quarter inches and then I folded it in half and when you're scoring you can use a bone folder which Stampin' Up! does have these and it does have its nice little logo at the end but mine has worn off after 10 years of use as you can see and that just gives your cardstock a nice crisp fold so we've got our card base there then the next thing I did is I took a piece of So Saffron cardstock, and I believe I cut this to five inches by three and three quarters of an inch. And I used this Coastal Weave 3D embossing folder. Now you can see these 3D embossing folders are a little bit thicker than the ones we used to have. The reason they're thicker is because they give really really deep textured impressions on our card stock and I just I love I love texture on my cards so I'm really enjoying these 3d embossing folders now here's a tip for you though when you run this through your die cutting machine make sure you use a stamp and spritzer to spray your card stock first so this with water so this is a stamp and spritzer and you pull the cap off and you can unscrew it fill it with water you can also fill it with a reinker if you want to also this is just water, but then what you do is just give your cardstock a couple, just a couple spritz of water, put it in the embossing folder, close it, and run it through your die cutting machine using the appropriate plate sandwich. And then when you pull it out, that water softens the cardstock fibers so that the impression you get is a lot deeper. Now you don't have to use the water. That's just a little trick to get a really deep impression with it. So we've got that. Then I've got this piece of Whisper White cardstock, and we're going to stamp our palm trees on this. Now, where are the palm trees coming from? From Timeless Tropical, which I have used this set before. But you know what? Once I like something, I get fixated on it, and I use it, and I use it, and I use it. But the good thing about is, with that is you get lots and lots of ideas for what to do with this stuff. So I have the tree image, the palm tree image here. And we're going to use some sponge daubers to color in the trees. And that's how we're going to get a multicolored look. We're going to make the branches green, old olive, and we're going to make the stems or the tree trunks soft suede. And we're going to use sponge daubers to do that. So Stampin' Up! does sell sponge daubers in the back of their annual catalog in packs of five. And these tips are white when you first get them. I like to put a piece of masking tape on mine and write the name of the ink that I'm using it with uh, on there, but I'll let you in on a secret. I don't really hold to that. So even though this says Old Olive, I'll pretty much use it with any Stampin' Up! Green that I've got. So make sure this is Old Olive, yes. So you just slip it on your finger, and I'm going to tap it around in there, and I'm going to apply it to my palm tree leaves right on the stamp just like that. Now. You could also have a variegated look by using another shade of green. So for instance, you can use Old Olive and you could pull out Pear Pizzazz if you wanted to. And we're going to stick with just Old Olive today. Now this one I'm going to use with my Soft Suede ink pad and I'm going to use that on the tree trunks, like just like that. Okay, now I'm going to take my Whisper White piece of cardstock and I'm going to stamp the trees right about there just like that all right then I'm gonna put another set of trees right over there so and you know what I think my old olive pad needs re-ink so I'll give you a little lesson if you've never re-inked an ink pad these are our re-inkers it's always a good idea to buy a bottle of re-inker 
when you buy the ink pad. That way, when your ink pad starts to go a little bit dry, you've got it ready to go. That would be incredibly frustrating to get ready to stamp and use a certain color that you have your heart set on and your ink pad's dry and you don't have the reinker to refreshen it. So it's just always smart to do that. If you're going to order the ink pad, order the bottle of reinker to go with it. They're not expensive. I think they're like three or four dollars. So just throw them on just like you do adhesive. Okay. And that's just what you do. You just squeeze the bottle right onto there. So now let's do this again. Now same process. Use the sponge dauber, apply the old olive ink to it. And we're going to thoroughly, I can already tell that's a lot greener. I like that. And we're going to use soft suede again on the tree trunks. Okay. Now you could also use Stampin' Write markers too to do this same process. So if you had an old olive Stampin' Write marker like this and a soft suede one, you could use the brush tip to actually color on your red rubber stamps. But I don't have a soft suede marker. So that's why I'm using sponge daubers and my ink pad. Okay, so now we're going to stamp the tree. I think we'll do the second set, maybe right about there. Okay, I'm happy with this. All right. So we're going to start putting our card together. Oh, wait, no, we're going to stamp something else. Let me grab my label. So from Crumb Cake Cardstock, I die cut a label. And the die set that it came from is the Painted Labels dies. And it's this one right here. So this is meant to go with the Painted Poppy set. But I got it because I like all the little versatile labels that are in here. And look at this scallop border. That's so pretty. But in any case, this is the one I used for that piece there. So I'm going to take an embossing buddy and I'm going to rub this on here. So the reason I'm using this is it gets rid of all the static so I don't have stray powder sticking where I don't want it to be. And we're going to make this a birthday card. So I'm using the sentiment, may your birthday be memorable from Timeless Tropical. And I'm going to use Versamark ink because I want to heat emboss. And Versamark will stay sticky longer, so it will give me time to apply the powder. Okay, I got that on there. Now, I don't know if you know this, but I get up at 4 o'clock in the morning, and I go to the Swickley YMCA, and I walk the track for a half hour before I start the class. So I'm sprinkling on white stamp and emboss powder. It comes in a jar, but I pour it into this Tupperware container because it's so much easier to work with. And I walk around the track, and I think about stamping. I think about ideas. I think about what I want to do. Um, yeah, for a half hour. All right, I'm going to turn on the heat gun, so it's going to get a little bit loud, but we're going to watch the powder melt. Okay. Warm it up for about 10, 15 seconds. Hold it over that, and you can see, hopefully, that that powder is melting into something shiny and white. There we go. Oh, that's lovely. Lovely. Crumb Cake is one of my favorite colors of cardstock because it is such a great neutral to have on hand. It goes with anything. And it's really fun to distress it and use it on vintage cards, too. I love crumb cake. Now we're going to start gluing stuff on. So I like to use liquid glue when I'm gluing dry embossed pieces of cardstock. I find it holds better. And I'm sorry if this disturbs some of you, but I'm going to glue this at an angle. Some people like things straight. I do not. So glue that at an angle. Besides, you know what? It takes the pressure off trying to glue things perfectly straight. When you just slap it down crookedly, because it's supposed to be crooked, then you don't have to worry about it being straight. All right, now I'm gluing down this main piece here with my palm trees. Okay. All right, again, if you have any questions, make sure you leave them in the comments, okay? Happy to answer them. All right, now we are going to use some of this fabulous burlap trim. Now, I'm going to be honest, when I first got this, I wasn't sure what to do with it because it's thick. 
it is thick and it's sturdy. And I thought at first maybe I'll cut it lengthwise, but then it disintegrated, so that wasn't such a good idea. But I found that what I like to do actually is just pull apart the fibers. So I'm gonna cut a length of that. And if you watch, you can use it like that, that's fine. Or you can pull apart the fibers like this. And I love this look. I'm sorry my voice is a little bit scratchy. We, the air is really dry around here, so I feel like I'm constantly losing my voice. As much as I love winter, I have to say, I am ready for spring. I am ready for spring. So, okay, and you can just keep pulling and pulling and pulling at it until you are happy. There is no right or wrong with what you're doing. And we're gonna glue that down like that. And I think probably what's gonna be best here are glue dots. So let me take my utterly destroyed roll of glue dots. I promise you they don't look like this when they come out of the package. They only look like this when you stamp a lot and the inner circle falls out of it and they get rumpled. Okay, and then I'm gonna put this like that and you can still adjust it after you've already adhered it, so. I love cards where like the messier they are and the more destroyed you make them, the better they look. Yeah. And this I'm going to put on with Stampin' Dimensionals. So let me find them. Here we go. All right. And remember, I am making the sample from page 11 of the mini catalog. And pull those liners off. And we're gonna put that right on there just like this. All right, and now there's one more thing. Well, actually there's two more things. We're gonna use some Whisper White Baker's Twine and some Noble Peacock Rhinestones. All right, well that was the last of that twine. Look at that, an empty roll. Is that not the most satisfying thing in the world or what? Don't you just love when you use something up like that? because it means I fully got the use out of what I got and I can go buy more. I think that's the real reason I like using it up because it means I can go buy more, more stamping supplies. Okay, so I folded that in half so I could tie a double bow with that and I'm gonna go ahead and stick that on with a glue dot too, which I am just about at the end of my rule with this one, okay. Now with this twine, you might need to roll the glue dot up a little bit so that it doesn't show, but you can do that. You can do that, and I'm gonna stick that right there. Just like that. Oh my gosh, I love how messy all that looks. That is nice. Well, you know what? I wanna do something else too. Hmm, how can I do this? I wanna like flick stuff on. I think I'll use my old olive marker. Have you ever tried this trick before? I've showed this on my blog before. So I've got this marker, the Stampin' Right marker, and you can use, that's a bullet point or fine point tip. This is the brush end. We want to use this brush end. You can do this with Stampin' Blend markers too, which, um, no, I'm going to use it with this. So, and you take the cap and you take the point, the brush tip of that marker, and you put it inside the cap just like that, and you flick it. Do you see that spray? Isn't that amazing? Oh. It just elevates the card, don't you think? And I'm gonna do it again, and I'm gonna do it again. Sometimes I don't know when to stop. And let's see if we can try it with a stamp and blend marker. Let me get a, this is bronze. I know I have a soft suede one. Have you ever used our stamp and blend markers? They're filled with alcohol ink. That's crumb cake. They color so so beautifully because you can shade things and you get no marker lines and the stamp and blend alcohol markers they also have a brush tip and they have a bullet tip I'm gonna use the brush tip again to flick let's let's see how this works so I flicked with an old olive stamp and write marker now I'm gonna flick with a dark soft suede a soft suede stamp and blend marker which is alcohol ink okay Oh, yeah. I'm loving this. Okay. That looks good. That looks really good. All right. Now let's add some peacock, noble peacock rhinestones. 
pen, you can use your paper snips, and we're just going to randomly apply them, and we're going to be generous with them. We're not going to hold back. We want to bling up our card here. And let's do another one up there. Oh my gosh, that gives it just the right amount of color. I really like that. Let me show you the original from the catalog. Because that's where I took this from. Right there. Look at that. That's pretty darn close. And that didn't take very long at all. I really like how that turned out. See how easy that is to just case it from the catalog? You don't have to be an original artist to stamp. You just have to have fun with it. All right. We are going to move on to card number two. And let's turn to that page. So this is the Parisian Blossoms Suite. This is beautiful. Vintage. Romantic. Soft. Love it. We're going to make this card right there right there. And what I was going to do those flowers with those flowers, because I actually don't have the stamp set that has those flowers in it. Um, I was going to use the small bloom punch, but I think I might try cutting it from the designer series paper. So let's give it a whirl. Let's try it. So we are going to start with a piece of pool party card st cardstock. And this time I cut the cardstock in half at four and a quarter inches by 11 inches. And I scored it down the middle with my bone folder at five and a half inches and then I folded it. There we go. Then I have a couple pieces of paper, designer series paper from the Parisian Blossoms pack. They're 12 inch by 12 inch sheets of paper and you can see them right here. There's all the patterns and they're champagne foil. So it's actually a specially designer series paper. And this piece is cut to, oh, what was it? Five and three eighths by four and three eighths, I think it was. But I'll have the measurements in the description so that you can make this too. So a little bit of liquid glue, and we're going to adhere that right on just like that. So my goal with my projects is to make you believe that you could do this too and that it is fun and it's something you could definitely try. So if you ever, ever have questions about anything I'm doing, just let me know. I want you to understand it and I want you to have fun with it. Okay, next piece. This is vellum cardstock. If you can see that it's translucent, you can see through it. And what I like using vellum for is when I want something there. I want a layer there, but I don't quite want to cover what's underneath. So in this case, it's this designer series paper. It's too pretty to cover. So I cut a circle um, from vellum cardstock, and what I used to cut that circle was these layering circle dies. And they come with scallop circles and just regular circles, and they're meant to layer onto each other. But I just used this circle right here. Die cut, used it to die cut that vellum and we're gonna glue that down. Now, normally, vellum can be a little tricky to adhere because it's see-through, right? However, we're not gonna see it in this case because our embellishment pieces are going to be covering that. So, I'm gonna use snail to run some right in the middle a couple times, just like that. And I'm gonna put it on this piece of cardstock right here. And you can see I went over the edge of it just slightly, just slightly. And I'm going to glue this piece down to my card base. So you can see that a snail actually works pretty good. You can't see it very much at all. Now if it was dark paper that we were putting this on, you'd probably notice the snail, the adhesive a little bit more. But because it's on a light background, it's not as noticeable. But there's all kinds of tricks for hiding the adhesive with vellum. And one of them is to layer embellishment pieces on top of it so that you can't see it. So okay, so we've got that part done with our card. Now the next thing we are going to do is we have an Eiffel Tower somewhere right there. Now this didn't come like this. I will show you. It's actually from the Parisian Beauty stamp set. It's this stamp right here. And I stamped this in 
Memento Tuxedo Black ink on Whisper White cardstock. Then what I did is I took the dies that coordinate with the Parisian Beauty stamp set, which are these ones right here. So you have a solid Eiffel Tower image and it cuts out this stamped image right here. And that's what I use. Now, there's a more detailed Eiffel Tower image too. It's a little bit bigger than this one, but all those little holes, it'll it'll die cut all those little pieces out. So you don't even have to stamp the Eiffel Tower if you don't want to. This, this is really pretty with champagne foil. I have a couple cards on my blog with that. Then you have a die that says Amour, one that says Mercy, which we're going to be using today. And this is a swirl, very, very fine swirl. And this is a fleur de lis, which cuts out that image right there. So it's a really pretty stamp set. I, I like it a lot. Oh, thank you for the hearts. I appreciate it. So I stamped this in, I said in black. I die cut it using the dies that I just showed you. And I'm going to put this on the card base right here. But before I do that, I want to tuck three little flowers. So I want to show you the two ideas I had. So if you happen to be watching right now, maybe you can tell me what you think. So this is the small balloon punch, and this is a free celebration item. So you'll find it in the celebration catalog. So I thought, okay, I'll punch three of those out, and then I thought maybe I would crumple them up a little bit. I'm going to show a card that uses this technique on my blog tomorrow because I'm all about the texture, baby. And I thought, oh, I got glue on my fingers. An occupational hazard of being a Stampin' Up! demonstrator. So I thought, okay, we'll put some cute little flowers there. But then I thought, this Parisian Blossoms Designer Series paper, look, see, that's the side I'm using for there, but the back side of it are these flowers. So then I thought, why don't I cut some of these out and I could put those around the Eiffel Tower, right? There's more than one way to use your Designer Series paper. So, I'm going to cut out a few, and we'll see how they look, okay? So these are paper snips, super sharp. How do I know? Because I've stabbed myself with them several times, but they cut like a dream. They're sharp all the way to the tip which makes it easy for cutting ribbon, cutting twine, navigating tight corners, fussy cutting, snipping, you name it, these booties can do it, and they're only 10 bucks. Okay. Now, see, that's cut off a little bit because it was on the edge of the paper, but that's okay because, you know, I can do something like that. I can tuck it. So let's cut out another one. Oh, look at this flower. I think we'll cut this one out. Yes. All right. Oh my gosh, this this is going to be pretty. Um I don't know what to talk about while I'm fussy cutting. Hmm. I tried out for Jeopardy again. That might interest you. Maybe it doesn't. <laughs> I don't know. I'm reading a book on Benjamin Rush. I love biographies. Um, we'll do one more flower. Do you know about the rule of threes? It works for photography too. But some, like something like the, it's more pleasing to the eye when you do things in threes or in odd numbers basically. So whenever I have embellishments, I sometimes consciously try to make them like, you know, three, five, seven. So maybe we could tuck. You know, I gotta get a baby wipe. I have too much glue on my fingers. Everything's sticking to it. And it's not staying in place. Does that happen to anybody else? When you stamp, you get glue on your fingers, and then you can't get anything to step to stick. Okay, so I don't know what looks better: these flowers or these ones. I can put rhinestone rhinestones in the center of either of them, but I don't know. If you're on here, do you have any opinions? Any preferences? I personally like those ones. So maybe I'll go with those ones, I think. That one's kind of wonky, but you know what? Look, look how look how that hides that. Yes, look at that. I still have glue on my fingers. 
Man. Man. Okay. I think I like that. I like those flowers. I'm going with that. So now what I have to do is I'm going to put dimensionals on the back of my Eiffel Tower. Let's get the mini ones for the top because it's kind of skinny up there. There we go. And then I'll put a bigger dimensional on the bottom there. Um, actually, you know what? No. I'm going to put mini dimensionals on each of these legs of the tower. Has anybody ever been to the Eiffel Tower? I haven't. But my two older daughters have. And they are in love with Paris. They want to go back very, very much. Actually, my oldest daughter wants to go back to Paris. My middle daughter liked Paris, but she far preferred London. Unless you think they get their wanderlust from their mother, I can assure you they do not. Their mother is extremely happy being at home with her books and her stamps and her little dog, Lily. Yes. I don't crave the excitement of the world. No. And if that makes me boring, then so be it. Instead of the joyful stamper, I guess I could be the boring stamper. All right, now it's time to put our flowers on. Yes. Okay, so this flower, I think I'm going to use some liquid glue on since I'm tucking it behind the Eiffel Tower. Now, I know this flower is way out of proportion to the size of this Eiffel Tower, but it doesn't matter. It's art. I could have made my Eiffel Tower purple if I wanted to, and it would be just fine. So, there we go. Take the little liners off, and we'll put that one there, and we'll put that one. Um, let's tuck that one back there, too. Oh, my gosh. Oh, I'm in love with this card. In love with it. And I didn't think it up. I got it from the catalog. So, it's not a Nicole original. You know what? I'm going to put these on last, just because that's what I always do. I put the rhinestones on last, but I need to get my fine tip glue pen because remember I told you we were going to, I was going to die cut that mercy out. I did. It was this die right here. I, I cut that out of cherry cobbler cardstock, but it's on a dryer sheet. That's a little tip for you. These dies, the little pieces they cut out can get really tiny and intricate, and sometimes they get stuck in there. So what I like to do is lay down. Oh, you Jane, you climbed the Eiffel Tower. Wow. <laughs> oh, and you liked both flowers. <laughs> well, maybe I'll have to make two versions of it then. <laughs> oh, darn, more stamping, right? So if you lay, um, you lay your card stock, you lay your dryer sheet down, lay your card stock on top of it like this, lay your cardstock on top of it, on top of the dryer sheet, and then put your die your on top of that, run it through your die cutting machine. Then you can take this off, and when you peel this off, the piece that's the part that's die cut will stick to the dryer sheet. So it'll be so much easier to remove it. And that's so helpful when you've got little pieces. Like look at the little dot to that eye there. That's really tiny. So I would have had a hard time with it otherwise, but this dryer sheet trick, it just does it. So it's the dryer sheet, piece of cardstock, your die, run it through your die cut machine, and then just peel the paper off. So now I'm going to use my paper piercer. Now Stampin' Up! has what's called the Take Your Pick tool. So it's got a piercer on it in addition to, I think it's like three other um, tools. But I bought this like 15 years ago with Stampin' Up! So... That's why I have it. And now I'm going to use fine tip glue to glue the Mercy on. And I'm going to put glue on this part, not on this part though. This is, it's just going to have to overhang it. So the M, the E, and the R is where the glue is going to be. And we'll very carefully apply it. Just like that. I'm going to flip it over and I'm going to lay it down just like that and what can be helpful is to take a stamping block and set it on top of there and put some pressure on it for a few seconds so it gives the glue time to really form a good adhesion with 
the paper. Okay. And now I have the challenge of gluing that eye on. I actually might put some glue on there now that I'm looking at this. I don't like how it's kind of just flopping around my card. I don't want any floppy pieces on my card. Floppy is bad. Okay. Put more pressure on that. And now here comes my stamping challenge for the day. I have to put the little dot to the eye on there. And I think what's probably going to be easiest is to put that on first, that little dab of glue, then lift up the eye with my piercing tool and it's getting caught in the fibers of the dryer sheet. Or I like my finger and it catches and I'll use my stamping pier my piercing tool to manipulate it onto that little spot of glue there. Okay, now I know my Mercy is going a little bit downhill. It's a little bit crooked, but I'm okay with that. It's a handmade card, I tried my best. So it'll be fine. Now I'm gonna add some champagne rhinestone basic jewels to this card. So these are absolutely gorgeous. I don't know if you could see the little champagne foils in the center of these flowers, but it's there. Hmm, we'll tuck one right back by there. And I think we'll do a medium sized one on this flower right down there. And then let's tuck a bigger jewel right down there. There we go. I love that. Let me bring out the other card. There we go. Both of them cased from Stampin' Up's mini catalog. No need to reinvent the wheel when you sit down to stamp. No need. There's too many beautiful samples in the catalog. And if you want a catalog because you don't have one, let me know. I will pop one into the mail uh, for you free of charge. Just message me your address and I'll send you the mini catalog and I'll send you the celebration catalog. And then you can start casing it too and making your own stuff. So those are the two projects for today. I appreciate you joining me, Nicole Steele. I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator. You can go to my site, thejoyfulstamper.com, if you want to read about Paper Pumpkin, if you want to shop, if you want to join my team. I would love to have you. This is this month's host code. With every order of $15 before shipping and tax, use that, that code right there. And I will send you my March class tutorial for free. It's a bundle. And it's all the tutorials for my local class that I hold here in Pittsburgh. And a lot of times, actually, that class is filled. So I've had several requests for the projects. And so I decided to put them in a tutorial bundle. So normally my classes are $15. All you have to do is put in a $15 order, same as anybody else. Use this code and I will email that tutorial bundle to you and you can make the projects yourself right at home. So thank you so much for joining me today. Don't forget to share this video. I so appreciate your support of my little business here on the internet and I hope you have a really blessed day. Bye guys.